I've got friends that I know that I'm only gonna hear from in a time of need. I've got friends that hit me up when it's been a long time they ain't heard from me. I've got friends that will do all if I make that call and tell him it's peak. If he puts you on a shirt, he did it for me, it's a loyalty. I've got friends that won't go anywhere else, she calls me the TBE. I've got friends that I call my G. Couple day ones with me. I've got friends that started out like that, but she turned into a queen. Back in the palace, ain't where you find my royalty. The next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is Joshua Buatzi dominates Dan Aziz to earn a shot at the title. And at this point, I will point out that the Boxing Bros called this fight correctly. Salute to the lead predictor at this particular point in time, G, who is currently 4 0, uh, tied for second. Trill Dollar Bill and myself at 3 and 1. And Ned the TBE in last place at 1 and 0. <laughs> but we all called this fight correctly. Um, this fight put Joshua Buatzi in a position to fight Dimitri Baval uh, and become Dimitri Baval's mandatory. However, Dimitri Baval is currently agreed to fight Arthur Betabiev for Undisputed. So at some point, uh, Joshua Buatzi may get a shot at Undisputed. So my question to you all is, one, how do you rate Joshua Buatzi's performance against Dan Aziz? And two, do you see him having a shot at beating, like a realistic shot? Anyone has, like, the puncher's chance, but a realistic shot from skill skill set, ability, boxing IQ standpoint of beating Eva Arthur Betabiev or Dimitri Bavar? I'll start with you, Chill Dollar Bill. Um, actually, you know what? I was actually like, he really did a good job. He really actually did a good job. He was throwing, he was mixing it up. He was going downstairs. He he made Dan look like he didn't belong yet. Actually, you know what I thought was hilarious, right? We need that ref here. Because <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> if that, that fight would have been stopped, especially when Dan fell flat on his face, I was like, oh, Fight's over. You know what I'm saying? Usually when somebody falls flat on their face, they call the fight. Nah, nah, he slipped, yo. He slipped. <laughs> nah, he got hit, bro. That was a slip, bro. He got hit, though. He got hit. You got to call it. Yo, he got hit, and, and he, he fell. Went flat on his face. <laughs> if they was here, Tony Weeks would have stopped the fight. Oh, to- <laughs> <laughs> Shout out my man, Tony. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Tony Weeks would have definitely stopped the fight. But um, yeah, I thought he, I thought he did good, man. They trying to say that you know he's 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 in line. He, he I was impressed with him. I mean, maybe because the dude Dan ain't no, you know, he ain't no, you know, one of the elite guys. But this dude uh, Buassi was hitting him with everything, going up, going down, body shot up top. He was looking like he was the man in there against Dan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, you know, yeah, I, I, I want to see him in there again. He, he, I was impressed. He, he, did, he did good. And they showed a lot of sportsmanship after the end of the fight, which I thought was dope. All right, G. It, um, all right. So, in regards to uh, Boachi's performance, yeah, I, I felt like he won. But I, I had issues with the 11th round. I felt Aziz slipped on both of the, both times he fell. And to me, it looked like a clear slip, man. And then, like, the first one was, like, debatable only because Bawashi did land a punch. But if he didn't even throw the punch, the dude was going to fall anyways. You see what I'm saying? So I was like, eh, whatever. You know what I mean? But I'm not upset because it's like, even if you remove that round, Dan was not going to win anyways. But to me... I wasn't really impressed with Buwachi's performance. And the way, like, what, what Trill said about Conor Ben's performance, how I view Buwachi's performance, I felt like this was a, a sparring session, you know? And I'm looking at Buwachi, like, you know, he showed, like, he was exhausted, like, halfway through, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, yo, will that pity pat style even work against <laughs> the, the champions of the division? I, I'm sorry, I don't see it. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, Buwachi, to me, it's like I've always had issues with him, but I see the promise in him. Where it's like, 
He has knockout power, but he has poor defense. In this one, he had decent defense, but it seemed like his knockout power faded. You know, and that could be, you know, to Dan Aziz's, uh, you know, um, abilities in the ring. So I'm not, like, taking any, anything away from him. But that performance wasn't like, oh, my goodness, yo, Bawachi is in, in the building. Yo, <laughs> champs, y'all, watch out. He's coming. Like, I, I was like, ah, it's cool, but I just don't feel he's ready. Who's ready? You know, and it's not a bad thing. I just think, you know, um, you go get it? He, he's moving in the right direction. Yeah. But if his next fight is Baval, he's in trouble. And I think he's going to lose horribly. And I, I just don't feel like it's fair for uh, my man Buwati. So, And I kind of felt like when he left Eddie Hearn, I didn't left Eddie Hearn because he didn't want to fight Baval, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? So then now... I already paid him. <laughs> I was going to say, can you make it? Yeah, I got it. So with um, Buwati... You know, when he left, uh, you know, Matchroom, I thought he he left Matchroom because, you know, he actually didn't want that smoke with my man Baval. You know, so then now they're like, oh, you know, Baval's next. What's good? And I'm like, all right, this sounds like smoke and mirrors to me because you already know Baval and Benabiev about the fight. So bringing that up is like pointless unless they're just trying to sell that, yo, Bawatsi's that dude to promote you know, his new promotional company. So I, I don't I don't believe none of this. I think Buwati's a good fighter, but he's just not ready for the big boys yet. All right, uh, TBE. I didn't get to catch this fight. I didn't even know this fight was happening, but Buwati's my guy, and that's all I got to say. Well, thanks, TBE. Um, so... <laughs> um. Yeah, look, a few things. I I already predicted that Joshua Buachi was going to win this fight because I just thought Joshua Buachi was the better fighter. Uh, he was he had a better amateur career. Um, I feel like he accomplished more in the professional rankings, and I I felt like Dan Aziz was the flavor of the month. Like, I mean, I say this respectfully. We do this in America. We hype up fighters in America. I felt like Dan Aziz was getting hyped up. He was a guy they were trying to build up and hype up. But I never really saw anything special in Dan Aziz. So, to me, I just thought Joshua Buachi is going to do a job on him. Boy, but, then, but then before the fight started, I saw Buddy McGurk was in Dan Aziz's corner. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was just thinking about you guys. I was like, oh. <laughs> When I saw Buddy McGurk in Dan Aziz's corner, I said, this man's about to get the dog snot beat out of him. And I scored the fight 118-108. So to me, you know, even if you take away the slips, it was a dominant performance by Joshua Buachi. But, you know, I want to give Buddy McGurk some credit. He didn't have to throw in the towel this fight. He didn't have to say, I'm not going to let you take any more punishment this fight. <laughs> but his man still got beat up and dropped twice. Um, so I'm just I'm just pointing out, and I said this years ago, and tell me I'm lying. If you see Buddy McGirt in a fighter's corner. You ain't right. <laughs> the other guy's going to win. All right, so this ain't, what do you want me to do? You want me to lie, bro? You ain't, you ain't right. <laughs> This is my call. This is on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone said Buddy McGurk should have a towel sponsorship. So, so, <laughs> you know, but anyways, I'm sorry. I don't want to do Buddy like this. I like Buddy McGurk as a fighter, but as a trainer, bro, I've, I've seen Buddy too many times. You know what I mean? And somehow he gets credit for it. But anyways, um, what – Raiden Joshua Buachi's performance, I thought he looked more fluid than he did against uh, Craig Richards before it looked like he was trying to figure out how to win. It looked like he didn't transition from offense to defense fluidly. It looked like he was thinking about it or th thinking when I should do this. He looked more fluid in, in this fight. Like his punch selection was good. I like the body work he did. You know, um, Dan Aziz was in good shape. I'll give that to Buddy McGurk. He took the body shots 
And, you know, I, I don't think it was very intelligent to take that many body shots, but he took those body shots and he was able to withstand them. Um, he got dropped. And I know everyone was complaining about the ring being slippery, but solid punches landed from Buatzi when Dan Aziz got dropped. And even in the last round, to me, it looked like Buatzi had Aziz ready to go and he backed off. Yeah, that's a fact. The last and, that, and, that, and that had nothing to do with slipping. So that was the, the, the round immediately after the 11th round. So I, I do believe that Dan Aziz was hurt. And, you know, you could try to, uh, you know, you could give him the benefit of the doubt and say that it was the, the ring was slippery. But I, I do think that Buatzi was hurting him. So do I think Buatzi's ready for the best? I think, you know, at this point in time, he has no choice but to be. You know, he's getting older. And there's a new crop of fighters coming up. You look at like Ben uh, Whitaker, for example, who we're going to talk about later. Um, there, are, there are other guys who are going to move up, like David Benavidez. At some point, I, I see him being at 175. Uh, David Morrell, I see him being at 175. So, if not now, you know, it's not like the task is going to get any easier. So he has to be ready, and I do think he can be competitive with a Baval. Because he beat Craig Richards and Craig Richards was competitive with Bavall doesn't mean you do the cross fights. But what I'm saying is he has the skill set to be competitive. Do I think he would win? No. Better BF will stop everyone, in my opinion. So, I mean, could he be competitive until he gets stopped? Maybe. I mean, we've seen other people do it. So I, I, I think if not now, then win. But a great fight that's been out there and in the minds of the people is Joshua Buatzi versus Anthony Yard. I think that's still a great fight. I think I think the fight got closer. I'll be honest. I used to think that Anthony Yard was straight smoke him. The, the Buatzi from a few fights ago, but the Buatzi I saw uh, last night, I think he's gotten better and it'll be a more competitive fight. Um, so I would like to see that fight. Let us know how you feel in the comment section. Please like and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And please check out our podcast on all major streaming services. You're rocking with the boxing bros.